New England Cottontails, Part 1. So I'm going to talk about the endangered species, the New England Cottontail Rabbit. Uh, what's its Latin name? Silvilicus transitionalis. There we go. And the three main points that I'm going to go over in this Part 1 video are its candidacy for protection as an endangered species, an imposter species, and some captive breeding programs that are already in place for it. Okay, first is the candidacy for protection. And this is by the Endangered Species Act, uh, specifically, which serves the purpose of protecting native species, plant and animal, in the natural ecosystem or environment of a region. So there are two different categories under the Endangered Species Act. And they are you they categorize species as either endangered or threatened. And I'll tell you the qualifications for protection as an endangered species would mean that the in this case the rabbit would have to be in danger of extinction throughout all or a significant portion of its range. And threatened just means that it's likely to become endangered in the foreseeable future. So that means that if you look at the population trends, then it's uh, declining. Now, the New England cottontail is uh, currently a candidate for protection. The, I have, the paperwork is there, it just needs to be filed, which means that the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has actually gathered the necessary information to um, protect this uh, rabbit species as an endangered species, it just hasn't gone through yet. You know, they're very busy and haven't gotten around to it yet. But uh, otherwise, this animal is completely qualified, and that's why I have the information here to give to you. And as you can see, this is a range map of the New England cottontail, and see the black dashed lines that go pretty much through every New England state, even New York, and um, that's where this rabbit used to be found and now you can see it definitely meets the requirements for being uh, extinct or in danger of becoming extinct. It's already extinct in the entire state of Vermont and more than 86 percent of its home range it is extinct in which is completely unacceptable. This species needs protection. So because of its uh, delayed protection status, it is officially listed as vulnerable on the IUCN red list. And like I said, it's uh, not considered endangered or, th endangered or threatened at all by the Endangered Species Act. So first thing that needs to happen is that those statuses need to change. The five patches of range left, as you can see in the red circles, are separated completely by urban and suburban areas. So those are five completely separate populations and they have no way of interacting with one another, which is not good for a species. And um, what else did I want to say? Okay, in those five patches, um, this cottontail rabbit used to make up 15 to 25 percent, I believe, are the numbers. That's um, 15 to 25 percent of all cottontail rabbits in the entire historical region used to be the New England cottontail. Now it's completely extinct in most of it, and in those red circles, it makes up 0 to 10 percent of the cottontail population. So it's clearly declined and um, endangered. Okay, next we're going to go over an imposter species, which is the eastern cottontail. The eastern species was introduced to the New England states and thrives, pushing the New England cottontail out. It is impossible to tell the two apart without genetic testing. The picture that I have on the right is a general difference. Um, the New England cottontails are smaller, with shorter ears, the black outline on the ears is in most New England cottontails. It can sometimes appear in the eastern cottontail. 
there's a black spot on the head that appears in most New England cottontails that sometimes appears on the eastern cottontail. And as you can kind of see in the picture, the eastern cottontail has a white spot on its head that um, appears in about half of the eastern rabbits, but supposedly that spot goes away at about two weeks of age. So, and like I said, the markings are in some, but not all, of a certain species, and they're also interchangeable between the two. So literally, there is no visual indicator that of what species of rabbit you're looking at. You can't tell, and that's what makes uh, protecting it kind of difficult. Um, the only way to tell uh, for sure is with genetic testing, which is usually done on the feces left behind. So that's how you can do those population counts. And lastly, captive breeding programs. And this makes me just love the New England states, because despite having no official protection, every single one of the New England states have made great conservation efforts, including captive breeding programs that release New England cottontails into what little natural habitat they have left. So in the wild, no more than 15% would live past their first year um, into breeding age. And so that means that 85% uh, of the births would be, you know, those rabbits wouldn't make it. So these um, captive breeding programs are vital. Um, and, and of course, in addition to captive breeding programs, we need more habitat to release them into. So in 2013, Connecticut restored 57 acres of shrub habitat. And these are just uh, steps that have been made to save the bunnies. And um, we need to make some more, uh, get that protection. But to recap, um, talked about how the New England cottontail rabbit is a candidate for protection under the Endangered Species Act. Talked about the eastern cottontail, which is kind of taking over as the uh, predominant cottontail species in this region. And we talked about the captive breeding programs that are starting to get going. And so far, they've been doing pretty well. They've successfully released several rabbits. I'm not sure how many. Thank you for watching. Please go see part two and go to animalethicsri.weebly.com slash New England Cottontails for more information and like our Facebook page.